the Bohr model of the atom. All right, so as we put everything together, trying to understand what the structure of an atom was, we started off with a few ideas with our early atomic theory, and it didn't take too long for some of those to start to be disproved. And we needed to find a better model. Now, the thing about the Bohr model is it's not perfect. It doesn't explain everything. There's still some flaws with this, but it is a good model that still gives us a decent visualization trying to understand what's going on inside of an atom. So there are several things that happened that helped us lead up to developing the Bohr model. So some experiments were done, okay? So the first experiment was, if we take an elemental gas and we put it in a cathode ray tube, we would get colors, several different colors. Hydrogen gave us this bluish purple, neon was this red orange, okay? And that's where neon signs come from, is neon added to these cathode ray tubes. That's why all the classic neon signs are this reddish orangish color because it's all neon gas. We've got other gases in these tubes now. That's which is why we get different colors. And actually we have some LED lights and stuff like that too. But early on, we only had neon. Anyway, you can see we had a whole bunch of different colors. Now, listing out colors is not very exciting. So I actually do have some images of what some of these look like. All right. So here's a few. There's our helium, neon, argon, krypton, and xenon. So you can see each single cathode ray tube, though, is unique. We get a different color for every one. We can do a few more. Okay, we still get unique colors for every one. Now, this one's interesting right here, these two. And this H2 and D2. So H2 is just hydrogen gas. D2 is deuterium. So it's that deuterated hydrogen. It's the one where we've got one proton and one neutron. So you can isolate the deuterium from a sample of hydrogen. And so it's interesting is we still get the same color that we get from hydrogen, but we don't get quite intense of, as intense of a light when we have just the heavier hydrogen in there. So it's kind of interesting. All right, now, Another experiment, if I take white light and I shine it through a prism, I get a rainbow. So these are fun to do. Um, I actually have these candlesticks that are prismatic, uh, that when light comes in through my window, it will scatter a rainbow on the walls. I ended up having to put them away because my dogs would bark at the, the rainbow all the time. But anything that you know you can get that prismatic effect from, you'll shine a rainbow. Okay, and so this is what it looks like here. And if we focus the light through a slit, we'll get a better, more distinct rainbow, okay? All right, now the third experiment. What if I take one of those cathode ray tubes with an elemental gas, and I take that and I shine it through a prism? So because if I just take white light through the prism here, I'm going to get a full visible spectra of all of the light there. But our elemental cathode ray tubes those are not white light, they're individual colors. So what happens if I do that? Well, what I get is I get these distinct bands of color, all right? So if I take a cathode ray tube with an element and I shine it through there, I'm going to get distinct bands of color. And every single element, as we find out, has its own unique spectra, okay? So this right here is the hydrogen spectrum Okay, and so we get a line here, we get a line here, and then we get a line there. So these three are the most published lines. As our detection techniques have gotten better, we actually have managed to find that there is a fourth line in the hydrogen spectrum, actually. Uh, so these are really cool to do. They're a little difficult sometimes to do in uh, like a lab setting, in a teaching lab, because you have to have the room as dark as possible, and if there's any scattered light that comes in, it can actually cause artificial uh, bands to appear. But these are really cool to do, to see the different cathode ray tubes and then see these different colors show up, okay? And so here's just a few elements. There's helium, lithium, sodium, and mercury. And as you can see, they're all completely unique. And what's cool about this is you have to do the experiment. You can't tell just by looking at the periodic table how many lines something is going to have. Like 
we don't know unless we do it. So we can identify unique elements from this technique. And in fact, they call this atomic fingerprinting because just like all of our fingerprints are unique, each atom has its own unique uh, spectra. And this is one of the ways that we can figure out, you know, if we send a telescope up into space and we point it at an extrasolar planet, uh, we can actually say, oh, this planet has this gas and this gas and this gas because of a technique like this. So. We get a lot of cool information from this. So what we know is that our electrons are bouncing around our you know, area around the nucleus. And so what the Bohr model says is that it's also called the planetary model. What it's saying is that electrons are going to orbit the uh, nucleus. So if I have my nucleus here in the center, my electrons will orbit just like the planets orbit the sun. And electrons can go from one energy level down to another energy level. They can move between those. And when they drop back down, energy is released as a little packet of energy or light. And those are those unique spectral lines that we see. Now, as we're going to find out, electrons don't actually orbit um, the nucleus like little planets, but we do have what's called discrete energy levels. And so this visualization of the Bohr model with this planetary model gives us a good picture to understand that we have these discrete energy levels, okay? So we've got N equals one, two, three, so on and so forth. Those are our principal energy levels, okay? So they're not actually these colors. Uh, if I draw a whole bunch of concentric circles that are all the same color, it kind of makes you go cross-eyed when you look at it. So these are different colors just by virtue of the fact that it makes each individual ring easier to see. Now, one thing to notice is as we get further out from the nucleus, these energy levels get closer and closer together. So remember, what is binding the electron to the atom? It's the attraction from that positively charged nucleus. So we can only go so far out before the electron no longer is attracted by the nucleus. So we've got this model here where we have these discrete energy levels. And so when we have N, we're going to call that our principal. Okay, so our principal energy level. We can actually do something called quantum numbers. We're not going to assign quantum numbers to all electrons in this course, but N is what we use for the principal energy level. We are going to work with um, these energy levels though, okay? Now, what happens is we can have something will come in, an amount of energy will excite an electron, and that electron will jump up to a higher energy level. It'll hang out at that higher energy level in an excited state for a little bit, when it's done hanging out there, it will drop back down. And as it drops back down, it will emit a packet of light, also called a photon. Okay. All right. And so this is kind of a picture of that there. And so you have to have an amount of energy to get it up. Once it's up and it drops back down, it emits the same amount of energy that it took to jump it up to its higher energy level. And so what we get is these different transitions give rise to these different spectral lines that we see. Um, so we talked about electromagnetic radiation and we said that red light was lower energy than violet light. And this makes sense because if we look here, our red spectral line on hydrogen is a transition from energy level three down to energy level two. Whereas this violet line we see is a transition from energy level five down to energy level two. So what's more energy to go up to three or to go all the way up to five? Well, to go up to five. And so when it drops back down, it emits out more energy. The spectral lines that we see, those are all transitions down to energy level two. Okay, so anytime we get the spectrum that we can see like that, those are all transitions down to energy level two. Now, these are what we call quantized energy, okay? So if we look at this slope compared to a staircase, if I'm on a staircase, can I hover between two different stairs? I can't. I can only go all the way up or all the way down. 
if I were teaching a live, a live class, I would be jumping up on a stool or a chair or a table to show that I can only go up and then I have to come back down. I can't hover in between. Well, electrons on these energy levels are like that, okay? So again, we know that the electrons are not orbiting like this model shows, but we do know that these discrete energy levels exist. And so if it takes 900 kilojoules of energy to go from energy level one to energy level two, and I only have 850 kilojoules of energy, the transition's not going to happen, okay? You have to have enough energy to go all the way up to the next level. It hangs out there, it drops back down, we emit the packet of light, okay? So that's what we mean by quantize. There's discrete levels, you can't hover in between them. Okay, and so shorter distance, we'll get lower energy, longer distance, we'll get higher energy. And so that's why, again, the red spectral line is a three to two transition, and that violet spectral line was a five to two transition. Hey, and you can see here are those lines there. So this is the hydrogen spectrum. Okay, and so we get these discrete energy levels and we get these various different spectra for each element, which is really cool. So quantized energy, discrete sections of light. But as we're going to see soon, we're going to understand, though, that while we like the visual of the Bohr model, it's very nice to visualize these discrete energy levels by thinking about everything orbiting. What actually happens with electrons, though, is a little bit more complicated than just orbiting like a planet does.